Good evening, wonderful people, great dear friends, wherever you are on this very planet Earth that you could be created for the habitation of man, where we are born and where we shall all die. I welcome each and every one of you to this very evening exceptionally special broadcast. The time now is five minutes past 7 p.m. in the glorious land of Biafra, where the blood of Ikonso have watered the ground for the tree of freedom to germinate and to take root. I say good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and good night to some of you. Regardless of where you are, a lot of people are listening to us this evening across various platforms. I mean, very many people are listening right across this very planet Earth. It is a very sobering day for each and every, in fact, in fact, for a couple of days now, I will say, since the enemies decided to cowardly attack somebody sleeping in his father's compound. As I ask you to join this broadcast this evening, morning, noon, or night, depending on where you are, I will also encourage you to ask those who are around you to endeavor to tune in to be part of this very special broadcast. We are live on this very day, the 25th of April, in the year of Almost High Elohim 2021. So if you're listening to me right now, if you're hearing my voice, this is a live presentation going out to the entirety of humanity. It's a very sad day, I must tell you. A very sad day indeed. But I'm sure that the angels in heaven will be rejoicing. Because he concerns with them. My name is Nam Dekano. I am the leader of the indigenous people of Biafra, the largest mass movement of its kind anywhere in the world. I am the director of Radio Biafra and Biafra Television. And by the very special grace of the Most High Elohim, a servant of the wonderful people of Biafra. I have never, ever felt this bad before, not even when my parents passed. That is why there will be vengeance. And I'm going to pray to the Most High this evening, as we always do.
Tinha que não que por mim, Janina. Mamma, Banyu me, mana ni marga kena kebel. Kahara bondini neti nyala ka, nadi di konso, kuni meli gue, eka beranyo bo, di sini dia tua nutu nutu. Abang ni gini gesi ni mian gue puta, eli gue gada gada, ni ni buci nak kena. Anya na ajoge eze bube de nkozi. Mi konso ka kogula ki hon hon. Tupo wama liti ije. Ije nkoga na resine ya wei chika tazu wa zon. Anyo wanyo bondi o hapro. Nde dendo. Ka hon biafra ni ihi. On wun. Il consomme en accandillant. Ani wana ado gese bube de ngozi. Ke hon anya genine. Amana geno omi ikogi. Ki be wole awe kasi anyo wanyo di. Nozo puricha. Ni hino wole anya anya. Nopo nani ki bo nye newe. Topo nani ki newe. Rena nki iwe. Ndwa nye 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 Kwa mwa nye 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 Uru chobigi, na ini nega angosi, anya uwo, li hinchema nkanyi naga. Ya kwa anu masigi onye kre liwe ma kelo uwa. Na anye ga anu ntuwe hon biafra, anye ga anu ntuwe hon biafra nezia. Ewe na se mamma dregi chine kena. Ochito dregi onye me liwe. Anye na bisi ala nyego kaka. Onye obo nani anachi. Kano tuto na sopro na eja maste na ibigebi. Molo na ibigebi. Ise. 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 We are gathered here that this very gospel that is irrepressible may be preached. To the hearing of the whole of mankind. That at the appointed time in the future that no blame may befall us. Because the rage that we feel cannot be quantified, it cannot be measured. We lost the consul at the hands of cowards. Wretched, idiotic cowards who cannot fight a good fight. They did not engage him in the battlefield as they have been lying. Because in the battlefield, the consul is more than a million men.
the same people that could not invade the camp of terrorist Fulani traders in Enugu, that when the governor of Enugu state came to confront them, a sitting governor in the land of Biafra was chased away by AK-47 wielding Fulani terrorists in Enugu town. But they went to the home of somebody, ambushed him in his house where he was sleeping and decided to assassinate him. A man that is defending his land. A man that was defending our mama, our idemili from the ravages and excesses of Fulani terrorists and state-sponsored terrorism. Now we understand the reason why they installed somebody like Hoku Zadima. What they were planning to do, this Fulani Janjaweed, is to make sure that the seculars with very weak and idiotic leadership, so that we can be fighting this war on two fronts at the same time. On one hand, we are fighting Fulani terrorists and killers, and on the other hand, we are fighting governors who are hell-bent on killing us for fighting those that have come to kill us, which doesn't really make any sense to anyone. But that is what these governors are doing. They have come to hand over our land to their Fulani masters. That is what they are doing. Anybody following any of these foolish people is an enemy of the people. I must make that categorically clear for everyone to understand. If you're a follower of any of these governors, you are an enemy of the people. Ikonso was not killed during any shootout or confrontation. Ikonso was killed in his village, in his kindred, in the middle of the night, not on the battlefield. Because on the battlefield, there is no way any detachment of any army or any police or any idiot can defeat him in battle. He was undefeatable. He drove the Fulani people away from Imo State, did gallantly well. Ever since ESN was launched, I have not come across anybody or a group of people telling me that their lives hasn't improved as a result of the presence of ESN in our land. We no longer have rampant roadblocks as we used to have. People can now go to farm, not minding the two isolated Dave Umahi sponsored Fulani attacks on our people in the Boeing state. I am asking the Southeast governors and every other fool in the zoo, why was it there was no hoo-ha about Fulani people chasing the governor of Enugu state away inside Enugu city with AK-47 assault rifles? It only merited a glancing mention in the zoo newspapers. Nobody talked about it in any great detail nor depth. In our own land, Fulani are armed to the teeth. The army and the police are supporting them. Every blessed day, they are being supported by these people. Therefore, we must fight this very fight. And we are going to mourn Ikonso in a very special way. Very, very special. You know, in those days when, let's say, for instance, the Oba of Benin dies, for instance, I'm giving you an example that is more universal so people can understand what I'm saying. As soon as the Oba is dead, Headhunters will go into the forest and the Oba will be buried with heads of people. Ikonso is more than an Oba. And we are going to mourn him in a very special way. We are going to bury Ikonso in a very, very special way that history will remember 2021. History will remember 2021 the year 
that the enemies of Biafra came into our land using our own people to kill a defender of his people. He comes was attacked in his village. Opo Zodema and his family masters cowardly and wretchedly killed a man who was unarmed. His fight was against Fulani terrorism in our land. And they killed him because he refused an offer made to him by the same Opo Zodema. As if fortuitously, a few brokers back, if I'm not mistaken, I mentioned this very fact that Hopo Zodema approached the consul, our commander in Imo State, offered him money, a lot of money, and asked him to switch to Ebu Bago. The consul is a gallant Biafran. He said no, that he will not do it. Some of you can go to my last broadcast, if I'm not mistaken, I mentioned it. And that is a clear, unequivocal vindication of a consul. These are men that fought for their land without receiving one dime in payment. He was the head of a volunteer army under oath to defend the land of Biafra. And these cowards wretchedly and idiotically in the middle of the night, as cowards always do, to sneak up on him. They said it's a combined team of police, army, and DSS. And as I said earlier, a consul will be buried in a very special way, I'll show you. Not even the burial of the Oba of Benin will be as remarkable as his own burial, I assure you. Those in the know will understand what I'm saying. As if I said, as if I knew, and heaven put words in my mouth to alert the whole world to what Hope Ozodema had intended. <laughs> you know, we are Biafrans. It's about time that the whole world hear about us once again in a very special way. Our detractors and our enemies have brought death to us. And we are not going to fold our hands and just watch them pick up our people from car parks and motor parks and highways and all the rest of it. All of you who are, should I say, conduits and vehicle for Fulani Janjawidism in our land. I have nothing to say to you. But that thunder you have called down from heaven is about to strike. You know, people sometimes say to me, oh, don't say what you're going to do. And I said to them, they are very foolish. I tell you what we're going to do, and then we'll do it. So when it starts happening, you know it's coming from us. So you will know. I mentioned the concert during my last broadcast, and that is a clear vindication of that very brave soldier. I understand that a band of very hungry Nigerian journalists have been trotting out the narrative of their fallen masters that there was a shootout. There was no shootout. Absolutely none. He was killed in his house. He was killed where he was sleeping in the middle of the night, having subdued Fulani terrorists in Imo State. He subdued them. And Mieti Allah sent their houseboy, Hopo Zadim, who hastily arranged for a few, a few uh, they call them security operatives to come to kill a child of heaven. Before I came live on air, I sent out a tweet that the whole world may know. And it's a quote by Rachel E. Goodrich. And I'll repeat 
to the hearing of the world this evening from where I am. Vengeance is a monster of appetite, forever bloodthirsty and never filled. I repeat, vengeance is a monster of appetite, forever bloodthirsty and never filled. Ikunso is in heaven and he is going to be avenged. My God, he will. Shall avenge him. Everybody with a hand in the death of Ikunso are all dead people walking. All of them bang on. Because of Ikunso, what is happening today in Ekiti State is not happening in Imo State. And I'll read it because I read a comment by somebody who said um, it's only the, the Southwest that is now in a bit safe. That the North is on fire and the East is raging. But I want to remind all of these people what is happening in Yoruba land that they do not know. Because of the Consul Eastern Security Network, what they are doing on the ground in Biafra land, this type of news emanating from a Kitty state cannot be written about Imo state. Where he commanded men and confronted terrorists. I'll read for you. This was published by Guardian newspaper. For those of us who are in the habit of underestimating the sacrifice that we are making every blessed day to keep their land safe and secure. I want to let our people understand all over the world, those who are listening, that because of the likes of Ikonso, this type of news is not being written about Imo State. It is about Izekiti State. And I'll read it for you. We can no longer go to farms, farmers cry out in Ekiti State. Guardian newspaper publication. Farmers in Ekiti State have raised concern over their inability to go to farms due to attacks and destruction of crops by headsmen. Is this being written about Imo State? Do you know the reason why you're not hearing this type of news in Imo State? It is because of Ikonso and his gallant men under his command in Imo State. That is why what Fulani people are doing today to Yoruba people in Ekiti State cannot happen anywhere in the East. Impossible, it cannot happen. They understand it very well. And for you to put into proper context the bravery, the gallantry of these men in ESN, they are fighting three enemies at the same time. Three. And no army can even fight two enemies at the same time and survive. They are fighting three enemies and they succeeded in the objective as I gave them. Do not allow any full and terrorist activity in Imo State. It did not happen. They are fighting full and terrorists. They are fighting Nigerian army, which is essentially full and terrorists in army uniform. That's all there. They are fighting also the police. In fact, I should say four. And they are fighting the Fulefus in our land. Hope was Adema and go. We did not go after Hope was Adema. We were only facing the enemy in front of us, full and terrorists, masquerading as headsmen. And today, nobody can say, unlike before, that there are full and headsmen attack anywhere in Imbo State. It's not possible because of the bravery and gallantry of all these men. All of you, or some, not all of you, some of the Fulefus, the those in Ohaneze, and the idiotic governors that we have. The reason why your state is not like a kitty state is because of Eastern Security Network. Because it is here. A traditional ruler, the Alajowa of Ijowa, Ijowa, Ekiti, Oba Emmanuel, Omokwariola, 
during a meeting with the National Agricultural Land Development Authority, NALDA, lamented that insecurity was one of the major problems facing farmers in the community. Are you hearing such a thing about Imo State? Our number, our Abia, all these things are things of the past. In Eboin, we defeated Nieti Allah and they went home. Omahi is now begging them to go home, that they can come back in the future when the coast is clear. Now, do you understand? So you want your fathers and your mothers who go to the farm to go and farm to be like those farmers in Ekiti State or to be like farmers or, or have the same experience they were having, should I say, or they had a few years ago when Fulani were all over, should I say Fulani terrorists were all over the place. All of you have forgotten. You have all forgotten. And today, somebody who brought out himself to defend his land was killed for doing so. What Hope Uzodema was seeking to achieve, Hope Uzodema and all the idiots in our Hanez and Gatron and Dushi, what they want to do is to fight Eastern Security Network to pave the way for foreign terrorists to come in and take over our land. That's what they are trying to do. Some of you are too idiotic. Some of you are very, very idiotic. But in the end, we shall see. Those of them that try to tie our campaign to read Fulani terrorists from our land, those of you who are mischievously trying to tie it to our agitation for freedom, I have news for you. It was Britain that gave independence, United Kingdom now, that gave independence in peace, I would say, to a couple of black people that they assembled together and named Nigerians. Then, as now, Namdia Zikiwe agitated. Obafemi Awolowo agitated for freedom. They are both from the south of the zoo called Nigeria. They asked for the same thing that we are asking for now. The only difference is that they were asking it from white people and we are asking it from black people. These are the things that we are making absolutely and abundantly clear this evening, morning, noon, or night, depending on where you are. We asked for the same thing that Azikiwe asked for. Asked for the same thing that Awolo asked for at the hands of white people. Self-determination. The white man gave it to them without a fight. Without calling them, of course, uh, in the beginning, they saw Zeke as a terrorist. It goes with the territory. Had Azikiwe and Awolowo decided to go to war with the British, do you think they would have won? I'm sure the answer is no. Had Britain, or, or had Britain uh, chosen to remain in Nigeria in perpetuity, can anybody stop them? Of course, we know the answer to that. As somebody quite rightly commented, that is the problem with black people. This patent evil that is within us. What we are asking for from the East is no different from what the nationalists asked for from the white man before the granting of independence. So what they are saying for those who support the extrajudicial execution of people. So had the United Kingdom, of course, they had the power then. Had Britain then, the, you know, uh, had they decided, if, should I say, they decided then to kill every person in the zoo they created and named Nigeria, what do you think will become of you today? That is why I maintain that black people do not reason properly. I have said that from day one. And I maintain it. The same thing we are asking for.
today from black people, fellow black people, so to speak, were exactly the same things that black people asked for from a white man and it was given to them without mass, or should I say massive bloodshed or the mass killing of people. That is the difference between white people and black people. I keep saying this all the time. But judgment day is coming. Judgment day is coming. They know how stubborn we are. They know we are not going to go back not one, not one inch. They understand that until this freedom is given to us via a referendum, should they, of course, become amenable to this very sensible idea that the people must determine for themselves where they wish to belong to. And I must say this evening, as I've always said in the past, that people are suffering, people are dying, there is a very concerted effort to distort the truth and always change the narrative to suit the line that the government wants to trot out all the time. And the people who are accomplices to this reign of evil in Nigeria is their media houses. The media houses in Nigeria it's a very big shame, I must tell you this. They were reporting that a consul died after a firefight with the army and police joint patrol. Nobody told them, they never investigated to ask the police or, or the army. They did not go to his house to go and kill him where he was sleeping. Where was the firefight with who? And that is why everybody who is a frontline commander in ESN must be very, very careful. They will go to your village and they will bribe your villagers. They will give them money, as was the case with the consul. Just tell us anytime you see him. That was all they did. The idiots called somebody, a special senior assistant to Uzadema to say that, yeah, the consul is in the village. He came to our and they sent the army and the police to kill him. Some people collected money to betray his location because he came to his father's house, into his village, that he has been fighting to protect against the ravages and excesses of Fulani Janja Buddhism and terrorism. There he was betrayed in his father's compound. In his own land, these cowards came. Cowards they are. For only one man, with everything they had with them. And that is why there will be no forgiveness. Some of us understand exactly what the Nigeria government is trying to use Nigerian newspapers to do. And I must warn once again, Yoruba journalists, they are the problem. I want to ask Yoruba agitators for freedom to warn their journalists. Yoruba journalists, are, they are evil, beyond evil. People are suffering and dying today in Nigeria because of Yoruba journalism. Evil brand of journalism. And because of that, I want to remind them what is happening in Ekiti State in Yoruba land today because of the evil that is Yoruba journalism in channels, television, in punch, in all these newspapers, up to and including even Vanguard, even some newspaper. You journalists are evil people, evil, even worse than politicians. You always told the line of the government, lying and deceiving people. And because you are lying and deceiving people, that is why today in a kitty state in Yoruba land, people cannot go to farm. You are in Abuja lying. 
defending the, the line being trotted out by Lai Muhammad. You are in Lagos for writing junk, proscribed, outlawed. In a kitty state, they are outlawing your people in a, in a kitty state. Nigerian journalists are defending the Fulani. They are part and parcel of this effort to destroy indigenous populations. And as these Yoruba evil journalists are writing their junk every day in channels, television, in all these useless media houses, a kitty state is being taken over by Fulani terrorists as punishment for your lies and your deception. Yoruba freedom fighters must rise up now to deal with their journalists because they are evil. They were instrumental in killing the SARS and SARS protest. Yoruba journalism, evil, tribalistic, and wicked journalism. The practice in Yoruba land. Evil beyond evil. They will only promote you if you are one of their own. Very parochial. Even worse than Fulani. Even worse than Fulani in Asorok. Yoruba journalism will kill all of you. They lure you into a sense of security. Telling you about 2023. Maybe two people will go. It's our turn. Meanwhile, in Ekiti State, the Fulanese have taken over your land in Ekiti. Some of you are refugees in Benin Republic. You know me, I speak the truth, always. Regardless of the consequences, we are warning them to change from their evil ways. Yoruba journalism is responsible for the decay in the governance that people are experiencing in Nigeria. All these, not just Europe, I think all of them. If they can take brown envelope from Satan, believe you me, they will write about the holiness of Satan. Gotha journalism. Channels, news, television carry the headline they did not say suspected. They said IPOB, their sources, that IPOB attacked the home of uh, Hope Uzadim. Sources. Anytime it comes to IPOB, Yoruba journalists will not use the word alleged or suspected. They jump in straight. It's either ESN or it's IPOB. And they think they're doing it in order to spite us. That's what they're doing. They, that's what they're thinking. But they don't know that they are sacrificing their own land and their own people. Look at the Kitty State. The same thing you did in the past and you lost a lot and you have not learned anything. Yoruba journalists can never learn anything. The same idiotic mentality was the reason why you lost a lot into Fulani Caliphate. You are carrying on from where your ancestors left off. From a lot in Afonja. You have just simply carried on your spiteful, vindictive nature. Is the reason why Fulani terrorists are in a kitty state, making it impossible for you to go to the farm. But the console that you're writing about so disparagingly, because of the console, there is no Fulani terrorist headsman in Imo State, where he comes from. But you from Ikiti in Abuja and Lagos writing rubbish against a child of God. Fulani are taking over your land. But you will never learn. Because that, that propensity inside you, that drive to be parochial, to be very tribalistic, to be evil, can never leave you. That defines who you are. You can never rise above these. This your pettiness to try to be objective for once, especially the idiots in channels television. 
We have those fools as well in BBC, but don't get me wrong. That is sometimes I don't even know BBC when China's which one is worse. They cannot go and ask the police, where did you find the gun? So where was he? When he killed him, where did you meet him? There, there somebody will write and say uh, there was a shootout. They want to sound big. There was a shootout. If you claim you know where our camps are, why don't you go and uh, go inside and, and see for yourself? You only need to be sneaking about in the middle of the night using informants. As I said, they have called down the thunder. They will experience it very, very soon. Nigerian government is using Nigerian newspapers to keep all of you quiet until Fulani will overrun your towns and your villages as they're doing to Ekiti State today. They are trying to use their deceptive Yoruba media to demoralize the people, to make you turn your back towards Eastern Security Network that have so far made it possible for you to go to farm in peace in Imo State, where it comes so comes from. They know that ESN is invincible. They just got lucky. That's all. He goes on to his father's house, having driven away Fulani from Imo State. Went to his father's house to go and sleep, and they came there to kill him. They just got lucky. I can assure you it won't happen again. Never won't happen again. They think that by lying against this man of God, Ikonso Mwachineka, that somehow Yoruba media, you are serving the purpose of Tinubu, Tinubu will win in 2023. <laughs> oh dear. They use your media in Nigeria to work on your minds, to twist your mind, as CNN have succeeded in doing in America. People who should ask questions discover the truth. They cannot do it. If the army now go about and kill innocent people in Biafra land, they say, oh, they're ESN. They'll just place a call to a punch newspaper editor or, or channel's editor. It's ESN. Oh, yeah, it's ESN. Unknown government. Oh, it's, it's, it's IPOB and ESN. <laughs> These guys, they have mother sleep, I tell you. <laughs> How did people actually know that those they are killing are part of ESN security architecture? Anybody can be killed now and they brand you ESN. I remember when I was in detention, a lot of um, Nupe kids were rounded up around Bida and dumped in DSS dungeon for nearly two years, some four years. Anybody they see in the North, if you raise your voice and you say that what we are going through is not good, they come in the night and they abduct you and they brand you Boko Haram. And you know that the zoo, Nigeria, you know those that run the zoo in Nigeria, they're all very foolish people, all of them. After all, you don't have any lights, so let me not even go there. They have the same mentality as Yoruba journalists. They never learn from history. Yoruba, they don't, Yoruba journalists, they never learn. They, they learned nothing from history. I expect every Yoruba journalist to just sit down and ask themselves this question. How did we lose a Lauren to Fulani? How come there is an Emir? answerable to the caliphate, answerable to the sultan of Sokoto, sitting in Yoruba land instead of an Oba. Any day they ask themselves that question, I'm sure they will repent. Yoruba journalists, any day you sit down and ask yourself this very simple question, how stupid were we to concede a Lauren to the caliphate? Any day you ask yourself that question, believe you me, you will change from your evil ways. It was because of Yoruba and Nigeria journalism at large. Of course, BBC came very late. That was why 
They killed Fela's mother. Fela is a, is a Yoruba man. They killed his mother. They used Yoruba media because the Yoruba man was in charge then. Basanjo, a very evil man, I must tell you. Basanjo, one of the most evil people that Satan ever created. Lucifer. That man is evil. Beyond evil. The same people that went to Odi under Obasanjo, people were massacred but because the Yorubas were enjoying under a man they never voted for. They buried the story of Odi massacre. They went to Zakibiam, the same thing. Slaughter, wholesale slaughter of entire villages in Zakibiam. Still under Obasanjo, mind you. Nothing was said. Ah, uh, dear me. And under this reign of terrorism from the Janjaweed, Mbo massacre, Obibo massacre, Shia massacre, Shia Muslims in the north, massacre, Lake it all gate. Who do you think are the people responsible for making sure that you no longer think about all these atrocities? Nigerian newspapers, the media houses, evil people. Evil beyond evil. They brought their nonsense to write about a consul that defended him of state against Fulani Janja Buddhism. Unlike Ekiti State, where Fulani headsmen are still terrorizing them till tomorrow morning. And they are killing us everywhere. Their bandits are killing us, their army, their police. Their navy, air force, all of Fulani killing people all the time. And all Garaba Shehu could say is people are reporting killings as if it never happened before. This is the mindset of the people you're dealing with. You know, sometimes I wish that our people kind of abandon all this idiotic sentimentality. Oh, he's talking about my people. Because of that, you cannot see the truth anymore. Look at Garaba Shehu. Saying that um, people dying is not news. It's been, it's, it has happened before. So you get on with it. These are the people that came with the Aruga. They came to conquer your waterways. They are now coming with full and settlements everywhere. Some of you still cannot reason very well. You are like Hausa peasants, I keep reminding you. The same thing you're doing today, the same thing. You, they are doing today. Yoruba journalists, we are the same thing that Hausa peasants did many, many centuries ago. Look at where they are today. And as you can well imagine, you, are you hearing about Hausa anymore? Is it not Fulani now? They've taken over Hausa land. The same thing shall happen to all of you that are so foolish as to not to join this very crusade to free all ethnic nationalities trapped in the damnable zoological republic for the benefit of Britain and the glory of Fulani. Ikonsa was a brave man. At least in Imo State, are you hearing about Fulani headsmen did this or did that again? It's down to him. It is down to him. Zoo media, they are evil. Very, very evil. Buhari and Northern Governors Meet of Insecurity. Insecurity, what? In the North. In the North. They met over insecurity. The people that created the problem are claiming their meeting with a fake Buhari from Niger Republic. That the media, instead, I, I keep asking myself the type of God that made uh, these people that practice journalism in the zoo. I want to ask them a question. What is wrong with you people interrogating the fact that this man has a floppy ear, a pomon ear? You, we can't even investigate that. Not for one single day. Why is it that it doesn't trouble you that a man who was speaking his mother tongue before, Fulfude, can no longer speak it? Journalism in the zoo. They met. And as usual, you know, they're very clever. 
as they are busy ravaging plateau state you know full on i don't know why people fall for their tricks and their games you know I honestly i don't know how they managed to do it full on they have been ravaging plateau state but you know how clever like they did to go on the only person they could find to be the chairman of northern governors forum is simon a christian lalong of plateau state to give the world the impression that there is one Nigeria. After all, a Christian is the chairman of the Northern Governors Forum. After all, is it Aoudou Obe or one other idiot from Upper Benue is the, is the chairman of our Iraq Consultative Forum? Do you see how people fall for, these, for their games and their gimmicks? Do you see how foolish that we become sometimes? Do you see how the Fulanese, with the help of Yoruba media, have managed to twist our brain that we can no longer reason properly? The same man who is the chairman of the Northern Governors Forum, where he's doing chairman, Simon Lalong, is losing territory every blessed day to Fulani terrorists in Plateau State. All that concerns him is to be seen dining and whining with the other Janjaweed governors. That's all. He's the chairman. What concerns him is his title and his office not the welfare or well-being of his people. The same type of nonsense that we are experiencing. He's having meeting with them because of insecurity in the North. Insecurity that who brought about? Who brought about the insecurity in the North? It is the same Fulani. The same people that proscribed and declared IPOB a terrorist group. Because they know that we are the only people fighting them. It's only IPOB that is fighting them. Let us be honest about it. It's only a few days ago that our brothers and our brethren woke up in Yoruba land to start to agitate properly, as it should be. IPOB is the obstacle. And Britain advised them long time ago, those people are your obstacle, are the only obstacle you have. They are the only people stopping you from dipping the Quran in the Atlantic Ocean. Britain told them, proscribe IPOB, and they did. With the help of the same governors, they claim today are meeting in Enugu. The same thing they did to me, they did to Ikonso. After meeting with them, and uh, after feeling that I was talking to human beings, I went to my house, the army came to kill me in my house. Just like that. And had they succeeded, I'm sure that Punch newspaper, channels, TV, all these evil, wicked, satanic Yoruba journalists, they will write, there was a shootout at Kano's compound. Shootout. And you're telling me that God will forgive black people? Hmm. I don't think so, to be honest. They proscribed by POB because we are the only obstacle on their path and they understand it very very clearly but in their own land in fulani land it is only terrorists and mass murderers who are being promoted because you're told you the only thing that the DSS, their so-called dss their secret police is good at is abducting innocent people that's all they do do you know that in nigeria before you become a minister you go to what is called dss screening now you understand the reason why they have fallen in every key strategic security position. Everywhere you go to, only them are occupying the highest office. Do you know that uh, Pantami, that terrorist, who is your communications minister, he will tell you, bring your BVN, you all go queue up, you bring BVN. Give us your name, you give them. These are terrorists collecting your data. Oh, sad, sad people. Do you know he went for screening? I was having a sip of water. He went for screening. <coughs> and he scaled through. DSS said there is no problem with him. A terrorist though. Why did he scale through the screening? Because full and terrorists are in charge of DSS that is tasked with screening every political appointee, or should I say minister, before they are sworn into office. This is the government of um, Fulani, Miyeti, Ala, Janjawi, the murderers and killers. They protect themselves. 
Now, I want people to reason with me. Compare the treatment that Pantami, who is a well-known terrorist and terror sympathizer with how Ikonso was treated by somebody they claim is the administrator of Imo State, his own people. And I, I wonder if these governors actually have any brain in their skull. I, you know, sometimes it, it baffles me. Look at how the foreign is ganged up protecting their own, including their so-called presidency, which is a collection of Fulani irredentists in Asorok. After all, Bukhari is no longer there, he's a dead man. Can't you actually learn from the Fulani the way they do things? They are always defending their own. The, the only time they find fault in anything is only when that thing is being done by outsiders. With them, Fulani, there is no fault. No fault whatsoever. And you can never learn. In your own land, you are the one receiving 4,000 naira every week to be an informant. Whereas in Fulani land, they are the ones grooming terrorists to come and take over your land. But you are busy informing on somebody defending your land from the same terrorists that have, that have the intention of killing you. You can so much in it. In Fulani land, Pantami and all jihadis there in government. Look at um, El Rufai. El Rufai, governor of Kaduna State, came out and told all of you stupid, foolish Nigerians, told you to your faces, I went to Niger Republic, I went to Cameroon, I went to Chad, I went to go and give money to Fulani people so they don't come to Southern Kaduna to kill you. All of you are just there clapping for him, the next president. They said one preacher went to go and see him. They went to kill a consul, but a terrorist is a minister of communication in Nigeria. They found him out, and his people are defending him. Yoruba journalists are defending him. Oh, God. Now we know all those people, they say there is the shoe shine, nail cutter, all of them. Now you know that they were all sleeper cells. They were a my God, how foolish our people are. Over the years, for nearly 30 years, they were everywhere. They told you, we want to sharpen your knife. We want to repair your shoes. We want to cut your nail. All these were spies, full on spies. And now they used Miet Yala with their cattle as an army of occupation. And in the process, killing and maiming people and forcibly occupying our land. That was why they came up with Ruga. Some of you have no brain, you know, you Nigerians. And now they have the army to back them up. As if there was any doubt before as to the role the Fulani army was expected to play in advancing this Fulani conquest and, and Fulanization agenda they even went and brought Fulani terrorists and put them in the army direct. And as all these things are happening, people are just pretending as if life is normal, as if there is one Nigeria, as if everything is okay. Now, we have, we have not come to that yet. We have every justification to fight the police and the army. That's why I said I want to go to Hague. When we get there, we will ask the judge presiding over the case. If the army of Netherlands, the army of England, we are to recruit terrorists today to add into their own army, will you trust that army to defend the people? Simple question. And I'm sure the case will be thrown out. Now you understand. So we don't even know who we are fighting. Now we have their foot soldiers who are full of any terrorists with their cattle from Yetiala coming in. We are fighting them, and we have Fulani terrorists in army uniform pretending they are enforcing the law, killing us as well. And Yoruba journalists are in Lagos writing junk, defending them. Nobody has ever interrogated the fact that why, what are terrorists doing in the army and police? But he goes for defending his village, 
is the one that deserves to be killed. I'm sure they even use the army to intimidate politicians as well. But what Fulani is doing today, they have done before. It is in their DNA, they can never stop. Fulani expansionist tendencies and, and conquistado mentality is there and will always be there, if in case you don't know. They can never change. Not today, not tomorrow, not ever. Fulani will never, ever change, not in this life. So you people are in for a shock. The only, do you know the only thing that is saving us is this prayer we pray every day, that all our enemies, let that hand they have used to poison us, may they inadvertently also put it in their mouth and become contaminated as well. The only thing saving Nigeria, to be honest with you, is the, is the heroic exploits of Eastern Security Network and, and uh, Janjaweed bandits in the north. Those, you know, they, because they don't know the, where the boundary is. They said, come to Nigeria, Nigeria is your own. So they left um, um, Timbuktu, they left um, um, Gambia, they left Fajalon, and they came. Some of them you, were stopped in Yobe, some in Taraba, some in Benue, some in Plateau, and from there they started. Nobody told them anything. That is why you are all in a mess and will remain in that mess as long as your journalists keep on writing the junk that they have become accustomed to. As they were talking about killing a consul that did not kill anybody, any civilian, but drove away full and from his land, students were being abducted from a university in Kaduna State. They asked the governor to pay ransom because they were mostly, of course, they were Christians. Uh, they were killed. No one has gone there to level the village near the university. No, you don't hear about army operation or sting operation, no. No. <laughs> uh, confirming the development, the Kaduna State Commissioner for Internal Security and Home Affairs, Samuel Aruan, said the remains of three students were found on Friday in Kwanan Batule village, in the Koshan Coast University, close to the university where they were abducted and killed. And your army, the only thing they're doing is looking for people defending their land to kill. Courtesy of your governors. Courtesy of your governors. Honestly, I had intended to preach a lot today until the passing or the brutal, senseless, idiotic, and cowardly murder of a consul filtered through to us. Filtered through to us. Very, very sad indeed. And they have not stopped at that. They are same flanny bandits. They have kidnapped a medical doctor and abducted worshippers in a church in Kaduna. And you're talking about one Nigerian. You're asking ESN not to do. So what you want is for ESN to fold our hands and they will start abducting us in our own churches, in our own land. Is that what you're telling me? It will never happen. That was what he could so fought and died for. Even cows... Foreign cows, that is, cannot even live in the zoo. I think some of you are aware of um, the story making the rounds. I think it was, um, I don't know the state that imported 250 cattle from US. The aircraft landed at Motala Mohammed International Airport. All the while, the cattle did not do anything wrong. Throughout the whole flight, the cattle was very quiet. As soon as they landed and they brought out the crate containing the cattle, the cattle looked at it. You know, there is this smell. Anytime you land in Lagos, there is this very horrible smell that welcomes you to Africa. You know, Uyubo cow, Selense brought up on clean grass and uh, vaccine. Foreign cow, not used to all this nonsense. Do you know, as soon as they offloaded the, the, the crate, so it's kind of about the newspaper from the US. This cow took in Lagos air, stinking air, and said to itself, my God, what am I doing here? I might as well go back to the US. The cow broke loose from the crate containing it. This cow never made any noise in America. No, 
maybe he thought he was going to maybe Arizona or California. And when the cow, even cow, cow, ordinary cow, upon landing in Nigeria said no to hell with these people, I'm going home. The cow bolted from the container, destroyed the container and, and came out. And everybody was on the run. It's here, drama as cow imported from U.S. breaks loose at Lagos Airport. Who wouldn't break loose? That is to tell you that black people are lower than animals. I've been telling you this. An animal from U.S. cannot stand Nigeria. Cannot stand Nigeria. That is some Nigeria that people are saying is uh, uh, one Nigeria. He is our country. Let's unite and be one. Nama, Nama, cattle, cattle from U.S. A United States Nama cattle was in Lagos. I said, I cannot stay here. Cattle. That is just of you just said, I'm proud of my country. A United States uh, cow cannot stay in Nigeria. It broke loose. Uh, zoo. Zoo. Our nation is bleeding now. The same Fulani defense minister. This is something I want to oppose or them, uh, George Obiozo, all these people that have uh, that had a hand in the killing of Oikonso. I want them to understand this very carefully. Your so-called defense minister said you cannot kill bandits because they are innocent before proven guilty. Defense minister of Nigeria. But Oikonso how did you even know he committed any crime in the first place? Did he commit any crime? If the answer is, is yes, which court sentenced him to death? You went to where he was sleeping and you captured him where he was sleeping. Why did you not take him to court? Did you organize a trial for him very hastily when you arrested him? Of course, the answer is no extrajudicial killing which is execution because he is innocent which court of law tried him or was he tried on the pages of newspapers based on the propaganda and falsehood being peddled by Asorok and hope is on him we are guilty of what was his crime what is the crime of Ikonsa? I'm asking Hopus Ademma. Now, the defense minister said that bandits in the north, Fulani killers from Mali, from, from, from Futajalon, from Senegal, from Gambia, Fulani people from Niger Republic, in Nigeria, killing people should not be killed. Because we don't know if they're guilty or not. According to the defense minister, go and Google it. Yoruba journalists, go and Google it. You will see it there. May Lucifer have mercy upon your wicked souls because you're all going to hell, evil people. He said our nation, our nation is bleeding, according to the defense minister. And as somebody quite rightly pointed out, he doesn't even know the meaning of a nation because Nigeria is not a nation. Nigeria is made up of many nations forced into one country by British colonial masters and being perpetuated by their slaves for the economic benefit of the United Kingdom. I think I, I must thank Dr. Gwelaka for pointing this out. I think it's very important that we reason through this. Nigeria is not a nation. Our nation, Nigeria, this nation, and they claim they have PhD, they claim they went to school. Do you know the dictionary definition of a nation? Nigeria is not a nation. It is a contraption, not even a country. That is something for some of us to have in our mind. Everywhere is full and new. Mind you, the first minister is, um, is, a, is a full and new. <laughs> Those unwilling to forgive Pantami or Pantami, whatever they call the idiot, you are the problem. For saying that a terrorist should not hold a military position in Nigeria, you are the problem according to quote-unquote presidency of Nigeria. 
What does that tell you about these people? Uh, are people doubting what I said about the defense minister? Go and Google it now. What is it about bandits? He said that bandits should not be killed without trial, that everybody deserves trial before, but they want and kill the consul without trial. Those unwilling to forgive a Fulani terrorist, they are the problem according to Fulani presidency of Nigeria. And none of you are shouting one Nigeria, as if you're demented, especially Yoruba journalists. Very, very sad indeed. Very, very, and most of them claim they're educated. What, what, what? I, don't, I don't know what is wrong with them. I have no idea what is wrong with some of them. May Elohim have mercy upon their soul. These are the same people. Remember clearly, they asked the, the so-called president, Sikari Bashir, who is, I don't know if he's acting president, so I can lay curse on him. I don't know if he is. Do you know what he said? They asked me a question. He said, uh, Kemi uh, Adeush, you know, the former finance minister that forged her a certificate. I think it was NYSC because I know she studied in London, East London University. I know that very clearly. The former finance minister, Kemi Adeoshin. They asked them a question. They asked them a question. They asked them a question. They asked uh, Garba Sheikh a question. He said, no, that forgery of certificate is worse than being a terrorist. That's what he said. Forging certificate is worse than Pantami's comment on terrorists. Can you believe that? And uh, you useless Nigerian zoo animals, you are clapping for him, for Garabashi. Now, if certificate forgery is worse than being a terrorist, I want to ask him a very simple question. How about the forgery? Buhari's certificate forgery. That was when the Fulani went in for the kill, using intimidation from DSS, from the army, from the police, everywhere. But Buhari forged a certificate, which is worse than terrorism, according to the same, the same presidency. Buhari forged his own certificate in 2015. It's all there. With the help of Abakiari. Europe, it was Yoruba media at the instigation of Tinubu that buried the, the whole story. The case went to court. The judges said, uh, how can you say somebody who is a major general in the army did not have school certificate? <laughs> that was it. But that wasn't the question. The question is, is this certificate being presented to INEC original or fake? How can you say that somebody who is a general in the army had a first certificate? According to Nigeria's um, law courts, if forging certificates in the case of Kemi Adeoshun is worse than being a terrorist, how come Buhari forged his own certificate in the before he died in 2017? That tells you all you need to know. To keep Nigeria won is a task that must be done. <laughs> Uh, something uh, that go on said many many years ago that led maxwell chooks to write very movingly and i quote if you don't see anything wrong in nigeria something is wrong with you if you think that nigeria is normal then you are not normal you are abnormal all of you that see nigeria as normal you are all abnormal and uh, somebody also lamented, of course. Do you know one very funny thing about all these politicians and those of them, the affiliates we have, where we come from? Only yesterday, Boko Haram was attacking the hometown of the so-called hard man, the police inspector general in Yobe, in Gaidan. the hometown of the so-called Inspector General of Police, Fulani, Osman Baba Al-Kali. People were attacking his home. He did not send soldiers, no, send uh, police because they were in, in, in our war. Are we them are we them and I want mama killing people, <laughs> innocent people. That is Nigeria for you. No wonder the zoo has overtaken Congo as the country with the worst access to electricity in the whole world. Zoo, 
in the whole world, the worst access to electricity. That is coal, that is oil and gas, that is sunlight. From coal, you can build thermal power stations as they do in China. From the sun, you can solar panels, of course, everywhere. And uh, from oil and from gas, however you want it, you can generate electricity, but in the zoo, no. Because the full army have tied your future, locked it up and padlocked it more or less, and threw the key into the ocean. That is why all of us are floundering. And that brings me to OKC Pazo and some of the other useless idiotic governors you have in the East. OKC Pazo was quoted just a few days ago saying, we are demanding an apology over the crimes against Ndibo, according to OKC Pazo. That was what he said in that very vanguard newspaper publication. Then, okay, Zip has a very simple question. If you knew all these things, why did you go ahead to finish even, uh, to invite the army and police to come and finish those that survived the war? When Python Dance, uh, these people, army and police came to my house to kill me, they invaded my home as they did to the consul's home. They took away all the things in my house, went to uh, okay, Zip as and was showing it to him as trophies of war. They went to war in Isam Afarupu. They came for war in my house. And some of them were promoted in the army, some from brigadier to major general. The author of duty was Isam Afarupu, and the colonel's compound. We went there. We went to fight a war. We didn't see him, but we went to fight a war, and we killed 28 people. In Okezi Bazo's office. So he knew that a great injustice was done to be our friends, yet he invited army and police to come and kill those, those who that survived the war. Because I'm a survivor of the war. I was born a Biafran in the middle of the war. I was born a Biafran. I survived the war. Okay, Zipazo, invite the same people is asking to tender apology, he invited them to come and finish off those who are left. Anyways, the zoo. What, what do you expect? They keep raiding our land. The governors only have strength when it comes to the killing of their brothers and their own sisters. That is the uh, evil go. Hey, they love it, <laughs> including we. Care. When it comes to the killing of their own people, but any time the Fulani are ravaging, killing, raping, pillaging, you will never. They will never hold a meeting. Have you noticed it? Look at all the Ozo one massacre, Nimbo massacre. Look at all of them. Anamba, um, um, I am a massacre. Never, not one single meeting. When it comes to killing, the killing of their own people, they call Bishop, they call Ohanes, they call, they have a meeting. What does that tell you about these people? What does that tell you about these people and all those? that are supporting them. Their strength is in the killing of their own people. Today, they're holding a meeting in Enugu, government house, security, the, the burning of uh, hope of the mass house. But Enugu state governor, if I knew Gwani, you went to where house people are trading because it is illegal, of course. You want to redevelop the place. They call it Hausa. You know, when they, you know, Fulani, they are very clever. When they want to commit atrocity, they hide on our Hausa immediately. Hausa people being attacked at Ibaraba. Hausa people, this is his Fulani. Janjaweed, the real stuff. In Enuku State. Now, I want people to consider this for a second. Do you think that if Umahi or Ibazo or any of them, or Obiano, imagine that Obiano went to Ayam alone, for instance, and he was, he went to on the Chamin market, or maybe Newi, Nkwon Newi, and ESN was there brandishing assault rifles and chased him away. Do you think, do you know what will happen? Nigeria Air Force will level in Newi. It will not up to 10 minutes in there will become they will level it. But full and people now listen to this very carefully. Full and people in Enugu 
chased away an evil governor in Enugu. The people instrumental, these are the people that always invite the army and police to kill their own people for asking for referendum. But the full army chased them away with a gun inside the Enugu city. They did nothing. 82 division is there. The Fulani police commissioner is there. Nobody went to rescue the governor. I want people to understand how evil the governors are in the East. I want you to understand it. Um, I will ask you again. Can you imagine what will happen to any place where any sitting governor is confronted by men with arms? What do you think will happen? But the thing is that this thing happened inside Enugu, where you have 82 division of the Nigerian military. The people that carried out the raid on my house. Who gave those Fulanese the AK-47 they were carrying with which they used to chase away a sitting governor? You know, they, they say we hate them. We don't hate anybody. It is their behavior, the way they behave. You, if you understand these people, no single soul will follow any governor anywhere in our land. Maybe out of hunger, they will. A serving, a sitting governor was chased away by a fallen armed man inside Enugu. 82 division did not respond. The Nigeria police did not respond. Now, let us go back a little bit before now. Remember the MNA massacre that happened last year? MNA massacre, you remember it? We are those people carrying guns in MNA. Did they threaten anybody? The answer is no. But the army came, DSS came, and killed them. Just because somebody said that this could be, this could be uh, IPOB, Biafans. But in the same city, in the same Enugu, in broad daylight, full army people chased away the governor with AK-47. It is the division did not come. DSS did not come. The police did not come. Now tell me how you can love such governors. Just, uh, just come explain that to me. What we need is action. People are people keep telling me all the time we need action. But if we are not disciplined, we cannot win. Action comes with discipline. A lot of discipline. We cannot be fighting or prosecuting a war with multiple enemies and we lack discipline. We cannot do that. Please, very, very important. We cannot afford to be ill-disciplined. We cannot afford to be ill-disciplined. That is why discipline is key. Under one unified central command, under one unified central command. I remember something that I'm not about discipline, but I'm just telling our men on the ground about the, the need for discipline and calm head. Very, very important that we incorporate that into our thinking. Now they are killing us, they are arresting, they are dotting all over the place. People are not talking. But of course, very, very soon. I don't want to go into details, but um, uh, we shall see what is going to happen very, very soon. We shall see. We shall see. We are in serious mourning, I tell you that. We are. Terrorists are in charge and they're killing innocent people. And your so-called governors are there, pointing out their own people to be killed. Whereas foreign men in our land with AK-47, not for one single day, have we heard that the army confronted them or the police? Not one single day. But a sitting governor is more than comfortable to have his own people killed. Now they are meeting, but it's too late. Way too late. As you know, no dialogue and no discussion. We are all going to die. On this very day, this very sad day for me, very, very sad indeed, I couldn't possibly continue to preach. Because is in heaven watching over us right now.
and willing and wishing us to go ahead to finish this very work that he was a part of. We shall honor him in a very great way. Nigeria will remember the death of a consul. Forever and ever, they will. So will the world. I thank you all for listening this very evening. As we continue to mourn, a consul, vengeance will no longer belong to Elohim. It shall belong to us, temporarily at least. <laughs>